I'd like to start by explaining the C language to you, describing the C language as it sits in the world of all the other programming languages. C is quite a low level language. You will find that there are many operations that you can perform using the language of C that delve right down into the machine architecture that you're working with, much more so than with many other languages. Many languages such as uh, BASIC, they insulate the programmer from such uh, low level concepts uh, such as direct memory addressing and addressing individual bits within bytes. These things cannot be done in many languages, but C allows you to do them. So it is therefore known as a low level language. And yet, unlike other low level languages such as assembler, C is a structured language. C gives us many concepts such as functions, blocks, if statements, loops, and other such things that you will find in typical high level structured languages. C is a procedural language. When I say procedural, I'm comparing that to the other common type of language that you find in the world, and that is the object-oriented language. An example of an object-oriented language is Java or C++. C is a procedural language, which means you start at the beginning of the main part of the program. You work through it step by step, calling procedures as you go. A procedure, also known as a subroutine or a function, is another self-contained unit of code that is worked through again step by step, perhaps again calling other subroutines or procedures until all these steps that the program needs to follow are completed. Now you might think that's the only way that a program could possibly work. Well, yes and no. Object-oriented programs do not really work that way. I guess at a low level they do, but at a higher level they deal with objects and the way that those objects interact with one another. There typically isn't a starting point. On, well, of course, there is always a starting point to every program, but there is no necessarily obvious starting point when looking at the code. However, C does have an obvious starting point, and we will learn what that is when we get there in a moment. One of the very interesting things about C is that it is a multi-platform language. You can write a C program in one operating system, such as DOS, Windows, say, and the language, the program that you've written, will then be able to be ported, note the word portable, will be able to be ported to another operating system, such as Unix, or the Macintosh, or OS2, or something similar. You'll find a C compiler on just about every operating system that's ever been conceived. C is one of the most common languages in the world. C has been around for a long time. I believe that it started back in the 60s, and <laughs> interestingly enough, it was a derivative of the language called B, but we won't be talking about that in this course. C is an incredibly powerful language. In fact, it could almost be said that it's too powerful. It allows the programmer to do anything that the programmer wants, that the machine he's working on is capable of doing. You can do anything in C, even if that thing that you're trying to do is not advisable, or even if it's outright stupid. C allows you to do it and doesn't really complain and seldom even advises you that what you're doing is stupid or whatever it is. Now, many people see this as a problem in C and truthfully, it is a problem. It is a problem for people that don't understand the language of C very well or understand programming concepts very well or understand the machine that they're working on very well. These people can get into trouble. Correspondingly, C is quite complex. It's actually a very small language. When I say small, I'm talking about the vocabulary of C. There are not that many words that you have to learn. There are not that many operators and constructs in the C language. It's quite a small language. So you'd think that it wouldn't take very long to learn it. That's not exactly true. The small number of words available in C do paradoxically allow you to do a great number of different things by putting them in various combinations. And it's those combinations that are quite complex. For this reason, because C is powerful slash dangerous and complex, it's often difficult to learn C as your very first programming language. There are other languages such as Pascal and BASIC that are quite forgiving with programmers that don't really know what they're doing. C is not forgiving at all. C assumes that you know what you're doing. In fact, that leads us to our next point. 
C retains the basic philosophy that programmers know what they are doing. Now that's all very well for professional C programmers that have been developing in C for 10 years, such as myself. But it's not very good for people that are learning C. C is a difficult language to learn because there are so many traps and pitfalls, so many things that can go wrong and these things need to be carefully explained by an instructor. That's my role. You don't often find the traps and pitfalls of the C language adequately explained. Usually it's left up to the programmer to make their mistakes and learn from their mistakes. Now, I can't possibly make all your mistakes for you. You will have to do that yourself and you will make a lot. I made a lot. Every programmer in C that there has ever been has made a lot of mistakes and stumbled over a lot of the idiosyncrasies of the C language. Why am I telling you this? Because I think it's important for you to have an understanding of where you're going. If you've programmed in another language before, you might think C is just about learning another set of syntaxes and keywords. Well, there's a little more to it than that. You may actually find concepts in here that you've never seen presented before in any other programming language. And for the people that have never programmed before, well, I'm sure you're already daunted enough, so I don't think we need to stress that point any further.